Hi folks, welcome to my 8-Bit Retro Journal. Um, it's the month of March and um, I'm celebrating along with a bunch of other YouTubers the Macintosh with the hashtag Marchintosh. Um, uh, this video uh, actually has a QR connection because I'm going to be demoing a command shell that I implemented um, on the Mac but I originally prototyped it on the QL. I originally called it Climax, standing for Command Line Interface for the Macintosh. Uh, and eventually I, I renamed it to Climate because it was a better name as a product. Um, you can see here that I have um, the, all the source code. I have the uh, command C is the parser, uh, expression C is the expression tree, and aux C is basically the lexical analyzer, and then command H ties it all together. Uh, I do have the executable here, so let me just show you really quick what that looks like. Um, and uh, then um, I what I want to do is, is, is show you, uh, once I ported it over, I had to add a bunch of uh, elements to it. I'm going to sort of go through that on the Macintosh side. But anyway, so it has a command. Uh, it can do command parsing. Now, there's no directory listing here, obviously. This is just sort of hard-coded in as a, um, just, to, just to be able to do the parse on that. Uh, it does have the basic interpreter. Uh, to 10. Oops. And this is a sort of a cross between Super Basic on the QL um, and uh, ZX81 Basic. It was actually uh, had the best of both, so it didn't actually. It had, um, I mean, it didn't have function definitions what the QL had, but it had a lot of the other things like repeats, repeat loops, uh, multiple uh, commands per line. So this can do that. Um, you know, I, I have also other uh, um, commands. Uh, in here, but this just tells you that the parse works. Um, so um, let me go back to the um, ice and just to bring it back here. Um, so I'm not going to compile it today on the QL because it's, it's going to take a little bit too long for that. Um, back in the day, I used a, a text editor called QED and I used Digital Precision Small C to compile the source code. Um, and I, and I broke it up into these three files in the header file. So I only had to compile one thing at a time. I think I started this on microdrives, and uh, which actually worked. And then I moved to a floppy disk. And I got this all the way to a workable prototype that I then ported over to the Mac. And I didn't really have to do that much on the Mac with regard to the parse, the, the commands, and the um, basic. I just had to add the functionality to the commands. And I'll show you how that worked. All right, so let's, let's go on the Mac. These are the original files. Um, and uh, if I open them up in simple text, you'll see that it still has the, the QL uh, file uh, format, which uses the underbar and circuit period. And unfortunately, my scroll wheel doesn't work, so I've got to do this the old-fashioned way. <clears throat> so there's the, the main loop um, does, uh, just like on the QL. I'm going to go through this quickly. Um, deals with errors. And uh, then the parse command is a thing that um, allows you, in a big loop, you can uh, break out of it. And this breaking out of it is not critical on the QL because the, the preemptive kernel can always break out of it. This is just sort of to hit control uh, C to stop, basically, is what that's for within the program, not within the operating system. And then it basically first grabs a command, um, sees if it's basic, if not, See if it's, if it's an OS command, a disk operating system command. If not, see if I've aliased something. So um, these are the uh, the alias is pretty cool. It's pretty powerful because uh, it allows you to combine basic with uh, commands to uh, create your own, and you can create a Unix-like environment if you want. And I have a few scripts that I've already written that do that. And it's it's amazing that when I wrote this, it, it was actually it became more powerful after the fact when I realized all the things you could do with it. I've already um, been through this uh, basic parser a bit. Starts with beep and clear screen and edit. Um, and these are just uh, fundamental basic. Uh, although this is a more powerful basic than if you if you looked at my CX simulator, which this source was the root of. I actually had to strip a lot of stuff out because ZX81 is much simpler basic. They had good string manipulation, which I kept in here, but other things were simple. Uh, and so a lot of this is also QL basic, which has multi-statement lines, that kind of stuff. Um, and now I'm in the uh, the DOS command section, and here you have the alias command, you have a, a change directory command, 
you have copy, you have date, delete, dir. So a lot of the fundamental DOS commands. And, and all of these, th th in this uh, section, they're just parsing. So they're not actually doing anything. Disk copy, exec, which is a way to execute, format, make dir, prompt, change the prompt, uh, quit to quit the system. Uh, rename, restart, uh, remove directory, shut down. So it has all the, the basics you'd expect uh, on alias, version, and uh, what, which is tells you what jobs are, are there. I don't think I ever ended up implementing who at the end. And then the, the, the final uh, section is alias. And this basically just creates uh, sort of a, um, goes through a certain set of nestings because you have an alias within an alias to implement an aliases, which basically then goes through and it actually just parses commands <clears throat> a second time. You can do the whole thing over again. So, it, so there's lots of, so it adds this recursion. So there's lots of nesting. So in this alias loop, it goes right back to all the way to the top, which is, um, <clears throat> yeah, the, the, the parse command, which, which again, um, I wish I had a, this, the rolling mouse parses basic DOS and more alias commands. So you can have uh, alias commands inside of alias commands, basically. So anyway, just a, a, a quick rundown on that. And then the, um, this is just the expression tree, and this is just auxiliary functions to to get, the, basically for the lexical analyzer to get tokens uh, uh, and, and parse them uh, to help. So the, the command one is, is the basic part, request to send parser. Um, I don't believe this executable is is a compilation off of this. I think I moved these into a different directory and started making changes because, again, if you look at uh, any of these, they're still using the QL uh, file naming convention, so that wouldn't work. But this does uh, basically, uh, again, if I go uh, version, uh, yep, uh, climax. That was sort of my my name that I that I used internally. I ended up changing it later on to uh, uh, climate because uh, the folks that were helping me. Uh, Sell it didn't like the word climax, and I think I had this format. I also had this format. I think I liked the first one better than the second one. So, uh, yeah. So, um, but in any case, so that was the internal code name for <clears throat> for the system. Uh, but that's not how it ended up selling. But um, th this, so this does have certain things. It has. Uh, directory listing, because it's actually giving you a directory listing. But then the what is just, again, just like in the QL that I showed you. So there's a few things implemented. I, I don't think the leads implement it. Uh, no, so it's not. So uh, is copy CMDC, CMD2C? No, it's not implemented. Um, but uh, in, in any case, that was the early version. Uh, and of course, it, it doesn't do any of the um, uh, Macintosh things. It's just running a, a ThinkC uh, shell that ThinkC gives you. But that, so that was the starting point. So I, you know, that was my original first port. And I must have just implemented directory just to see if I could do that. These are all um, uh, ROM calls uh, into the um, oh, Mac OS's ROM. I think it was PBH. I forget what it stood for, but they were um, you know uh, system calls. Uh, but uh, yeah, and so now I'm done with that. Um, and then the next iteration of that, I think, was current, which was current for the history. And you can see that um, I added a file manager element. And then just lots of test programs to see what was working. So dir list, exec, uh, convert, alias, all these things are working in this example. I don't have the executable, so I can actually compile. So again, if you open up, uh, I think C was the uh, Mac compiler that I used. And that's actually a pretty good one. Um, this machine, this virtual machine is currently running uh, about four times as fast as an original Mac 2. Um, but yeah, so if I just, all I have to do is I have to build an application and that'll compile all these things. And so I call this one test. Let me throw that on the desktop. And uh, so it's creating, uh, and, and, and here it's um, the, uh, it's the uh, thing C that adds the, the console window that otherwise wouldn't exist. <clears throat> so that's what you get with, I think, ANSI. Uh, you get the console window. That gives you a little bit, uh, and I'm just going to kill the objects again because I don't like to hold on to them. Um, and so, you know, that's when I when I open this up, it opens a, a movable window. It's it's not well behaved. So if I have an infinite loop, uh, it, it I'm screwed. So I have to be very careful. So it doesn't do any event calls. 
But here, if you look at this now, it, it still does this. I think it does what now? Yep. So that is the list that you get uh, up here. <clears throat> uh, it even shows uh, hidden ones like cron manager. Again, uh, cron manager is the next one I'm going to show you in uh, ne in the next next week series in terms of how that works. It, um, yeah, so it has. I don't. It, it has what? It doesn't have. Who. I don't think I implemented who, and I don't think I implemented disk copy. Yeah, that's not a command either. So I got rid of all those things, but everything else works. So uh, if I want to um, copy simple text to simple text two, it'll actually copy it. And what it does is, I mean, the copy is a bit more sophisticated because it'll copy both the data fork and the resource fork. So the Macintosh actually has two has uh, has two has two parts of its file uh, system, and so copy and and there are flags where you can go. Um, and I don't know if I, so copy dash R, uh, it's a bad argument, uh, right? So I think the copy dash R simple text to simple text three. So that copy the resource for of simple text. So now what you're gonna get is uh, once it does it, yeah, so you, you, what you get is a non, and I think you can also say copy dash D simple text to simple text uh, data, I guess I should call that. And can I rename, rename simple text three to simple text data uh, resource res? Yeah, so um, you'll see that the, these, these are the two parts that make up, and this is gonna change in a second. These are the two parts that make up uh, the, the um, simple text dash data, it will now show up properly. So I can confuse it, but again, I did fix that particular issue uh, when it came to the final version. And I'm gonna show you the final version. I just wanted to show you this version right now. Uh, it does have some things working, but again, it's not integrated into the, the Macintosh, so it doesn't do the corporate multitasking very well. But it, it sort of, certainly does many of the things, and you can do things like this, for instance. You can go, uh, I'm gonna delete this. Uh, so I can drag these down to the trash. But they're the, these two parts make up a uh, simple text. And you can't run them individually, whereas this one I can run individually and it actually works as an application. Um, but the other ones I can't. So I'm gonna <clears throat> throw this <clears throat> out. I can also do things like uh, let me message equal, oops, keyboard mapping is off, hello world, right? And so I can print message. Uh, oh, yeah, sorry, let, uh, let message equal, sorry, dollar sign equal, oops, hello world, print message dollar sign, there we go, yeah, so I, I, I said, I said a string to a number. So, okay, so then I can say copy into test.text, I can copy that variable, and that's the syntax it uses. So uh, pipe is basically reroute the IO of my, in, what's in the A variable into test.text. And you'll see that test.text is now there. Um, <clears throat> and I can then also go in the other direction. It's gonna show up here in a second. I can also go in the other direction and say copy test.text text, yeah, so there it is, right? So if I, if I put this over this, it's gonna load it. It's gonna say hello. Oh, did not, what did I do wrong? Oh, I said A, so uh, print A is, is, is empty. Uh, oops, print A is empty. So I should have said copy test.text message, delete test.text, Copy test the text into message. There we go. <clears throat> and this time uh, it has message in here now. So it should be hello world. There we go. So you can uh, route or pipe stuff into a file. And then I can also go copy test the text into uh, out. Uh, and then I can print out and I can grab the stuff from a file into a variable. So this is how I could communicate with, uh, uh, so I didn't have to create special reading or and writing operators in basic. I could just keep the, the ones that the QL is super basic 
and ZX81 basics uh, provided, which they do have a, the QL does have a restore and read, but that's for internal data statements. So I didn't want to have file IO, so I thought, oh, what if routing, because I wanted this to be a command line interface. And again, I can also go alias ls dir, and I can go, and if I want to go alias ls dir dash l, uh, alias ls, I think you have to do it this way, dir dash l, ls gives you a long listing now, right? That's like dir dash l. So I can, I can come up with um, <clears throat> my own uh, mechanism. And again, so this was a, the QL is compiled with a little bit of work on the, uh, on the file managers. If we look at this, most of these things, again, if I stick this into uh, here, you'll see that what has changed is now I'm using uh, normal you know, Mac and generally normal file names. This stuff is still the same. That hasn't changed at all. So I didn't actually have to redo. See, I still does QL break and everything, which, which is just looking for a command key sequence. And I don't even know if I've stopped that or not. If I go into command H, which is where a QL breaks to find, uh, I basically just set it to zero instead of using the key row function. So I just commented out what it did originally, right? So these things are all commented out, which are QL calls, and I just set them to zero, zero, one. So they're just being ignored. So basically no breaks and always go. Um, and then uh, the only thing that was added is this, this file manager stuff. So, oops, yeah. um, and so this is the thing that uh, change dir, what dir, uh, is dir, uh, and here's get dir. And, ba and basically all of them end up doing these PBH uh, calls to get volume, set volume, and to, to get the various data. And then you just you, 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 you sort of parse through the, the data structures that you pass in in uh, uh, I think it's is a W dir uh, is um, uh, so this is the thing I'm, I seem to be passing into it uh, and then I assume I'm going to be reading it but uh, where is it set oh W dir is O dir uh, so I don't know what data structures is it maybe it's just a pointer to something but uh, oh it's it's uh, this W D V P rec that's that's the the structure it is in any case. So that's how you uh, do calls, and you know you you have to sort of learn how to do those, and obviously the devil's in the details. But once you figure it out, and here you could, uh, you know, figure out how to do, how to um, let's see if the copy the copy file, and you can see that there's going to be a dash d and a dash r option. Uh, copy file attributes, uh, oh attributes, right? But then they have the data and copy data fork, right? So it depends on what the status was here, and then copy resource fork. Uh, again, depends on what the status here was uh, as well. So I, I guess you you know you, you would well I believe you always copy the the resource fork, but you may or may not copy the data fork, right? So so I think the way it worked is if I had the dash r option, then here it says don't copy the data fork because you're doing the dash r option. Whereas you can see in this piece of code the this if statement's always done because you got to copy one of the two. You can't copy neither the data nor the resource fork. So yeah, this was a, a learning experience experience for me, you know, how to, the, the Mac did its thing, and it wasn't that hard. Anyway, so I called that my current version, but that was really just a updated version of the QL version with the features of the Mac file system added in, but yet it still didn't have this necessity of uh, integrating well with the, um, with the uh, Macintosh. And so then, um, uh, when I finally got past the history, QL combo is the final version here. And so you can see here that, let me uh, open this up. And again, here now we have the same uh, aux command expression with the file manager, but now we're adding stuff in for windowing system, print is for using the printer, file is for um, saving file information, like a lot, uh, I think you can save the output of your console uh, and then CL is sort of the main, uh, that's I think it's where main is located that calls it. So this ties everything together. This ties the parser together with the file management, with the window you get, uh, uh, any IO that you need to do with mouse, mice movement, et cetera, uh, file and print. I'm not gonna go into the details of how that works because this is not a uh, tutorial on how Macintosh programming works. I just wanted to show you uh, some of the software that I developed in the early 90s. And so, yeah, let's compile this, right? Um, the, um, and again, I think uh, I, there's an event loop here somewhere. I think it's in here. Yeah. 
there's your main event loop. And so this is, um, and, and I think if you watched my other video, usually you would have the, you'd have a while loop around get next event, right? So the while loop would be calling this over and over again. Uh, but the way I've done that is I manipulate it in my command parser. And again, if you watch my Mac versus QL, I think it's part of two of multitasking videos. You, I go through this in quite detail to show you that it's here uh, uh, in the, uh, I think it's in, in, in this, uh, it's in this function here. When I call Mac keyboard event, Mac break, uh, and wait keyboard event and Mac keyboard event. These are the things that actually end up calling um, if I look at the header file and I'm just gonna, but here you can see that Mac, Mac keyboard event is just a call to get next event. Uh, and then uh, Mac wait event is called to, to my main function. So this is an actual direct call to get next event. And this, which is a system call. And this is a call to main event, which was in the, um, Again, in, in this, in this, uh, oh, sorry, not in this. Right, right. Main main event is 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 this is this function right here. So that's where the while loop comes in as the parser is parsing, and that's how I kind of broke it up. Uh, and again, I, I go to, into more detail in part two of my '80s video if you want to watch this. So I don't want to spend too much time on this because this video will come too long. But yeah, let's compile it. Uh, build application. Oh, I guess the, this is when I was calling it climax. I actually like it better when it's all caps and lowercase ACS. That looks a little better. CLA for Macintosh. Let's put it on the desktop. And let's show you some, uh, I wanna show you some of the, the, what it can do. Because it, it's ended up being a pretty powerful scripting language. And it was the first scripting language for the Mac. And in fact, um, I have, um, I still have a, a Mac user review of it. And the reviewer loved it. The only thing that they kind of found um, that they, they weren't too happy about is that I didn't have, um, like up error wouldn't give me previous commands. So little things like that, they were like, oh, if you had added that, it would have been so much better. But they loved what it could do and it was pretty powerful. So um, so let me uh, close this up. And um, so now you can see that we have uh, all this stuff. And, and so what is, so for instance, if I go, um, let me do this, uh, dir, if I say copy uh, test.txt to jump.txt, oops, copy test.txt to jump.txt, it will say copy it, yes. All right, and if I want to say delete, uh, I can show you that it's there. Delete jump.txt, uh, no. Now if I get rid of this interactive flag so it doesn't have it anymore, I can just say delete Junk the text and it's gone. So, so the default was to have the interactive flag, and then you could override it. Um, and so, yeah. So this has uh, uh, I don't again. I don't think this copy exists. Yeah. So that's one of the things I got rid of. What exists? I don't think who exists. Yeah. So there's just things I got rid of. Um, but yeah. So this actually now interacts very nicely. So you can uh, uh, print. So that was what the printing basic program or the console window. Uh, so either what's loaded in memory or what. Um, what has transpired in this window you can print. Uh, and there's also a way to save, um, uh, oh, for the program, right? So if I load a program in, then uh, internally in memory, I can save it uh, or save it. I, I mean, I can do the save this way, but I can also use the menu. So that was what the file I was about. But um, so let me show you some of the programs I wrote for this. Uh, it was pretty complex stuff. Like I said, you can just do a simple 10 uh, uh, for i equals 1 to 10, 20, print i, 30, next i. All right, so it had that, but it actually had more advanced features. Uh, 10 for i equals 1 to 10, print i, next i. All right, so uh, 20, 30, list run so it could do it all in a single line as well but let's uh let me uh, show you uh, some of the other so now so now right since i have a program in memory this starts showing up and i can save it as uh desktop uh, uh loop.bass um and that allowed me to um uh, and it'll, it'll show up here in a second i could have also done the save loop.bass right so save loop2.bass so there are different ways i could have saved it 
Um, and uh, so there should be two way. And, they're, 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 and again, if I, if I click on that, it'll run it and do it. So, all right, so uh, but neither here nor there. Uh, but let's show you some, um, I want to show you some of the awesome, so I, I ended up writing a lot of code as I was selling the command shell because I really wanted folks to um, uh, be able to do stuff with it. So um, one of my favorites is this one right here, Unix Bass. And so if I open this up, you'll see what, so it actually allowed for uh, aliasing of a bunch of things, including cat and more, which get pretty complex because they're using the, that's this idea of piping and I had a match command. So let me just demo that to you um, just to show you how that worked. Uh, so if I, uh, uh, I can just double click uh, and it's going to run that. And so now it's actually no longer a program, but now I have LS. If I do alias, it shows everything I have. So for instance, if I can go CD up one directory and I can go more uh, test.txt and it'll do, uh, if I go back to, um, <clears throat> oh, and I, I think I somehow hung the computer. Hold on. A K uh, C and get a control K back. Um, so, uh, yeah, there's something wrong with this um, particular uh, um, emulator, uh, the, I, I, the mini VMAC, uh, because uh, not everything works properly. For instance, if I say print len, and the length command works on a real Mac, or if I use basilisk, if I say one, two, three, four, it actually gives me back some large number. So yeah, there's there's something wrong with that. So uh, let me go back into uh, uh, basic, and then let me do a more on something like calendar bass. And now you can see that it actually works, and it stops. And you hit return, and does more, uh, and you can go uh, stop it that way. Uh, and then if I do cat on cal calendar uh, bass, um, yeah, you know, the same thing happens here. So um, the, uh, uh, yeah, so uh, again, pretty powerful stuff you can do with a single alias where I'm having a whole bunch of basic stuff in here, uh, loops and uh, a loop and everything for more. So it, 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 you can do create really powerful commands. Uh, let's, um, I'm going to quit this, let's uh, show you some other ones, like for instance, the calendar program that I just showed you. If I throw it in here, uh, 2021, it's going to draw a calendar for um, this year. Uh, it's going to take a little while, I might fast forward over this. Uh, um, might take, yeah, not, actually not too long. So then it prints out all the dates for March. Uh, so it computes that, so that's kind of fun thing to have. You could print that out then, by using the print command. Um, but it should be accurate. Um, I didn't check, so uh, let me just backtrack here, December, what did it say for, oh, I guess I didn't get all the month then. Uh, let's do it one more time. Uh, no, uh, I can check, I can verify if this is the right date. I think it is, it, it should work. Um, okay, so uh, Depth First is an interesting program, so if I quit this, um, and click that first. What, what that's going to do, I can actually just double click on it. It's, it's going to go through and run, run through the whole directory tree, which is pretty cool. So this is the entire disk of the, uh, so again, I'm, I'm going to quit that since I don't want to do that. Uh, and if you look at it, it's actually not a very long program. Um, so it shows you the power of using the redirect stuff to get through um, uh, the directory. Here. So yeah, so that's pretty, that's pretty cool. Um, uh, what else do we have? We have a disk wiper, and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to open this up in simple text so you can see what, yeah, you, you can kind of see what this is going to do. This is going to uh, go and uh, fill the disk with zeros. That was the idea for that. It's got um, uh, customize. Uh, yeah, you have to close the app. Oops, got to close the app. Uh, what did I close? Oh, I closed the finder. Oopsie. Hopefully that'll come back when I, uh, yeah, didn't mean to close the finder. I gotta close the app. So if I hit customize, it's actually going to, this program customize your system folder for system seven only. So yeah, uh, so this can actually go and check what's in the control panels and then you can remove uh, or undo changes and return to menu. So yeah, that was, so again, you could write pretty sophisticated stuff with this. Uh, let me quit that again. Uh, oh, the encrypt function is kind of cool. So. 
Uh, let me double click on that. So this is a program that could encrypt so I can encode, give it a password, uh, A, B, C, D, and then the file name. And again, in, on the Mac, it uses colons for going up one directory. Remember, I'm, I'm in the basic uh, folder. So if I um, were to um, stop this and do a uh, do a dir. I'm in. I'm in this basic folder, which is here. I, I need to go up one level. So if I go up one level, cd dot, uh, I would see this. But if I stay in basic and run this, I just need to um, encode password a b c d e. I would have to go up up test the text, and then it's going to do the encode. And then it's actually going to create the file, and it's going to move this. It's going to appear up here. There we go. And if I um, open it, <clears throat> you'll see that it has gobbledygook in here. Uh, if I decode this uh, now with the wrong password, one, two, three, four, five, and I give it uh, test text ECR. Uh, it's going to create a new file and it's going to be garbage. Uh, here it is. So this is the decoder version of the encoded one. I'm going to throw that in here. And it's it's still encrypted, so I didn't get it. Uh, however, if I go and decode it with te uh, password which was uh, A, B, C, D, E, and it's uh, the file name is test.text.ecr. Again, it's going to create it up here. And it's already created. It just takes some time to, for the finder to sort of get up. As I said, I did fix that problem. Uh, oh, it's trying to open DB Edit. So uh, hello world. There we go. It, uh, this is why I drag and drop over things so it opens up. Uh, yeah. So hello world. Um, yeah, so the encryption program kind of works. The Q for quit. Um, and again, pretty, uh, pretty sophisticated stuff you could do with it. Um, what else? You have X copy, uh, which if you read it, I think it just says this program will copy files in the current directory to the destination directory without destroying any files. Uh, there's a backup one which uses the depth first uh, program, uh, program, and that one um, will yeah just run through and back up your disks onto floppies. So it's a pretty handy thing to write. Uh, App Launcher just creates a um, uh, another basic program that will. Put a bunch of execs in their app. But disk wiper, we talked about that. Uh, yeah, a lot of cool programs. Now, um, there was uh, there, there was these packs that I had worked on. I never actually got them to war, uh, got them anywhere. But if you look in this, uh, if I actually um, run this, so this is actually a basic program, and I just copy pasted this menu. So if I click that, it's going to start up this, and you get this, and then you can go, oh yeah, synchronize, boom, and it cause that and you go back to the menu. And what this is cool for is it'll remind me, uh, and what, what this is cool in the six is it shows you that if I open up synchronize, it simply just does uh, at the end if you hit return, it either calls menu, which is that which is that basic. Uh, so if, you, uh, if menu it, it L runs menu, otherwise it quits. Um, and so the reason um, uh, so menu is is, is a, a variable that's set by by this menu function, right? So I'm using sort of global variables to communicate between. So this sets menu to one. So basically, what that means is if I was called by menu, then return to menu, otherwise quit. So in other words, if I just call synchronize, it does this and then it it quits. But if I call menu and call synchronize through menu, it goes back to the menu. So that's, I was working on doing that. And I kept discovering cool things. And these are just similar things. Uh, none of them are implemented, I don't think. Full internal backup, you know, I don't know if that is actually. Yeah, there, there's, there's one or two of those that are implemented. So it's, I think uh, uh, cross-platform pack. I think this is the one that has, uh, if you do two, it takes you to a different menu. And then that one you can do. Uh, convert from Mac to and once a file. So this one actually was implemented. Uh, oops, sorry. C, and then back to that. Uh, um, and then I can just uh, let's see what this does. In the end, there should be a uh, L run. I should be able to just take a L run menu. And I, 
uh, all right menu. Uh, I'm not sure why that's not working. Let me let me see again how this actually works. I'm gonna quit. Uh, so heart um, filter. Uh, L run. Oh, I have to have it in quotes. That's why. <laughs> I, you know, it's been so long since I used it uh, that uh, um, yeah. So if I'm if I'm if I'm in here, uh, so if I call this and then I just uh, uh, break out of it. If I just say L run, oops, menu, uh, it'll just run the visual menu. So yeah, so you know, similar to how batch in in Windows in MS DOS could work. You can call different. You can call each other as basic functions. But yeah, that was it. It was it was a pretty complex and integrated basic. Um, I think uh, if you look at some of the uh, backup functions, I think it kind of demonstrates that uh, in terms of the things you could do. So this is a, a pretty uh, nice integrated. Uses a lot of the um, uh, concatenation for strings. It was the ampersand. Uh, again, the piping was very important. Uh, you could do all sorts of um, get, some, get information from any of the uh, DOS commands, uh, and so yeah. So this was one of the first uh, uh, shell programs on, on the Macintosh, um, and uh, you know worked pretty well. Uh, um, sold a few. It wasn't ever a bestseller because it turns out Mac folks didn't really want to want to do uh, command shell stuff. I did, but then again, I never stayed with the Mac. I, I stayed with it for about 10 years and then moved on to uh, Unix and, and, and now well, when I use all the platforms. I'm actually not a, as big a fan of the Mac platform now. Uh, the interface, I love the fact that it's on BSD Unix, but not the interface. But I use all machines now. But back in in the 90s, OS Wars, I was really, really loved the, the look and feel of the Mac, but hated the fact they didn't have a, a command shell interface. So I, I built this. Uh, uh, and anyway, it was originally written on the QL, ported over, and it was a lot of fun. And so, yeah, um, just wanted to share that with folks. And I will end it here. Uh, I'll do uh, videos on the other programs that I wrote. The next one will be Cron Manager, which is another parser, but it was uh, a parser that was actually integrated in more into the system versus just being an application. And as I said, uh, Climax now is the root of ZX Simulator, this ROM emulator that I wrote uh, in the, during the pandemic for the ZX81 on the QL. So I used the original. Um, interpreter that I wrote. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching me today and uh, stay safe.